What's up pilots? This is Nick from Part-Time Pilot. Today's video is going to be talking about ground effect. Okay, so remember those wingtip vortices that cause induced drag and wake turbulence? And if you want to watch those videos on what induced drag and wake turbulence are, just click up here in the top right. First one will be induced drag and the second one will be wake turbulence. So you can get some background on that. But uh, these same wingtip vortices can also aid an aircraft's lifting capabilities and uh, when near the ground, and I'll, I'll show you how. So when an aircraft is close enough to the ground, the net downward flow, the downwash from these wingtip vortices is reduced. This is because the vortices are being dissipated by contacting the ground, or these vortices, swirling vortices, hit the ground and they kind of disperse, they get destroyed. So this means less net downwash and less induced drag. And less induced drag means more net lift acting on your aircraft. And then the same effect can happen over ground or water. So it just needs to be anything that will dissipate those vortices. So here we have no ground effect. We have these uh, vortices that are coming off the wingtips. And the net downwash is the force here with the blue arrows. So as you can see, we have a net downwash here with no ground effect. But when we're close to the ground, these blue arrows are smaller. The net force is smaller because as you can see, these vortices hit the ground and they can't continue to propagate downwards. They kind of just disperse. And that has less of a net force downward on the aircraft, so less induced drag pulling down on the aircraft. Ground effect as a general rule does not come into effect unless the aircraft is less than a length of the aircraft's wingspan above the ground. So what does that mean? So if your aircraft has a wingspan of 20 feet, so a 20 foot wingspan, then you can assume to have a lifting benefit from ground effect when 20 feet or less above the ground. So when you are, your wingspan is 20 feet, and you're that same distance above the ground, ground effect starts to aid your aircraft. But at this distance, equal to your wing, a wingspan of 20 feet, the effect would be very small. But as you get closer, the, the effect increases. So when you're half the distance of your wingspan above the ground, so in this example, if our wingspan is 20 feet, we're 10 feet above the ground, uh, so that's half our wingspan, the ground effect can reduce induced drag around 10 to 20 percent. And even a 10 to 20 percent reduction in induced drag can make an aircraft stay airborne or get airborne at an airspeed a couple knots less than normal. So it, it, even though it seems like a small effect, it can have a, a large difference on a large difference on how you operate the aircraft. And then as you get closer and closer to the ground, uh, the effect becomes more prominent and aids in lifting the aircraft even more because the vortices are being obstructed earlier and earlier in their development, limiting the downwash to a minimum. So at about a quarter of the wing span, about five feet in this example, the ground effect can reduce induced drag by around 30%. And then when you're a tenth of your wingspan, you know, real close, about two feet, it's about 50 to 60% reduction in induced drag so you can really uh, remain airborne at uh, less speeds when you're that close to the ground. So pilots should be aware of ground effect during both takeoff and landing and you'll actually feel it when you start flying. You'll definitely feel uh, the effects of ground, uh, ground effect. And then during landing the decrease in induced drag means that any excess speed on your landing approach and flare will cause considerable floating. So you know, if your aircraft, this is, this is your aircraft, and you're coming in right here and you flare like this, if you have too much airspeed because you're close to the ground, the aircraft's not going to want to come down and you're going to keep floating. And if your runway's not long enough, you may have to do a go around because you're just too fast and you're not slowing down enough and ground effects is keeping you in the air. And then during takeoff, ground effect is most likely to result in becoming airborne before reaching a recommended, your recommended takeoff speed. So pilots actually use this to their advantage. For example, when taking off on soft fields, 
so like a muddy or a dirt field, maybe wet grass or something like that. By lifting off the soft ground early and staying in ground effect until flying airspeed is reached. So here, let's draw our aircraft again. So <laughs> it's a great aircraft, I know. So this ground is, let's say it's like mud, a little bit muddy and you're worried about your, you know, your nose wheel or your, your tail wheel or something getting stuck in this mud. So what you'll do is you'll take off as soon as the aircraft lets you and ground effect lets you. So let's say normal rotation speed is, you know, 60 knots. You may be able to rotate at 50 knots, especially if you have flaps. And so you can get up in the air, but you, now you don't want to get uh, immediately climb and get out of ground effect because you'll you'll stall because you don't have enough airspeed but what you do is you immediately kind of pitch down and stay at this you know distance of about five feet or so in ground effect and then you can speed up so let's say you lift off at 50 knots and then you just stay at about five feet above the ground until you reach you know your rotation speed i don't know 70 knots or so and then, and then you can climb once you reach that speed, and that allows you this whole distance to stay off the ground, stay off the soft field, and uh, can be a very useful trick. So that's all I have for ground effect. I hope you guys understood it. If not, or if you have any questions, please comment below. And if you're not subscribed already, press the subscribe button. And then always follow me on Instagram, at part period time period pilot, and stay tuned for more videos. Thanks, guys.